Let's also move on now, take a look at the Defence Minister's remarks about China. He's made these remarks uh, in London. Uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh spoke about um, how there was a sense now that China was respecting India more than perhaps it's done in the recent past and how this was indicative of a stronger India. Let's listen in. All right, so uh, was that just rhetoric from the defense minister or is there a genuine sense now that China at this structure, at this juncture, when it is economically not perhaps as strong as it was a couple of years back, uh, given the fact that the Indian Armed Forces have built up, infrastructure has been built up, uh, they've, they've begun to see India and react to India differently. Andrew Lung, the International Independent China Strategist, joins us. I'm also joined by Dr. Tara Kartha and Ambassador Anil Trigunath. Thanks very much for being with us. Uh, Andrew Lung, how would you look at the remarks of Rajnath Singh? Uh, do you believe that there is a sense now in China that India cannot be looked at strategically from the same prism as China perhaps looked at us a couple of years back? Well, of course, then India has um, capacities uh, have changed a great deal um, over the past um, um, uh, uh, couple of years. Um, and it is to be recognized. Um, so I think that the, um, uh, the article um, of the um, China's mouthpiece uh, really speaks to the truth. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there's also a, a rejigging uh, of China's um, diplomacy, um, you know, so sort of uh, veering towards a um, promoting a more harmonious relationship. Uh, avoiding um, kind of direct confrontation with uh, other countries. Um, and, and China has never made um, India its, own, its enemy, uh, but only China is defending its own um, uh, sovereignty, as in the case of India. So I think that China has always viewed uh, India not as an enemy, but of course that there are differences uh, in territorial claims um, and in uh, geopolitical um, um, kind of inference. Um, so this is uh, uh, to be to be taken for uh, for granted. But what has changed is is of course um, uh, China is now recognizing uh, India's uh, greater influence and also its role uh, in promoting a more multipolar kind of all order, which suits uh, China's interests uh, and in fact reflects the reality that's facing the world as the global south is assuming a greater importance. Um, so I think that all the, the, the various dimensions uh, translate um, into what's um, into the the, the, um, the the thrust of this sure. article. Let me just uh, quickly go across to uh, Ambassador Trigunayath. Do you believe that there is something profoundly different, uh, perhaps over the last several months, in Chinese foreign policy and their diplomacy, where they are being more friendly towards us, they are uh, looking more at diplomacy and, and, and less at aggression? Well, I don't think that uh, there is any uh, very significant or fundamental change in the Chinese approach as far as India is concerned. Uh, because China does consider India as a viable uh, and a credible country which can stand up to its uh, hegemonistic ambitions. I mean, that is something, it is there, and that's the reactions that we often get from China. Uh, as Mr. Kun was saying, I mean, India also wants to live with its neighbors peacefully and uh, grow together and develop together. But what happens is that if you, there is no respect for the agreements that have been signed, there is no respect for mutual sensitivities, there is no respect for mutual interests. So obviously, we are all uh, going to be in a spin where one has to look after its own interests. So India is currently growing uh, at a very high, which is a good thing that the Chinese are recognizing it. 
And uh, as uh, Dr. Zhang, who had written that article basically about which one is talking in the Global Times, he is after his visit to India, he is looking at a confident India. Uh, it is not an adversarial India. It is an India that can defend itself. It can defend its own interests. And I think that is something very important with regard to India's uh, robust policies, whether in the economic policies or the foreign domain or the growth of Indian economy per se. Because at the end of the day, Vishnu, if you are growing economically, if you are economically strong and militarily is strong to deter the, the any advances, uh, then I think you can go places. But if that is not the case, then obviously it doesn't work out. And I'm happy that the, our Chinese friends are recognizing it and uh, will be able to possibly calibrate uh, their policies, which should appear both in word and in content uh, as friendlier as is being talked about. You know, Mr. Long, let me just come back to you, sir, for a moment. You know, when you talk about China wanting to look at um, diplomacy as, as perhaps the way forward in international relations, why then is China making illegal land grabs in Bhutan, a country which has a population of about, what, one-fourth that of the national capital region of India? Why are you doing that? Why, why is China doing that? Well, um, you're asking me this? No, Mr. Andrew Lung, would you like to go ahead, sir? Oh, yes. Okay, well, well as I said, I mean, um, um, this is definitely uh, the first time uh, that China, the, the mouthpiece of the Chinese government, um, has um, um, uh, penned this um, a direct praise of India's um, no, achievements. So, no, 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 Mr. Lung, um, let me repeat my question. Maybe I was a bit unclear. Earlier on, when you were speaking, you said that, you know, there is a sense now that diplomacy can be used more effectively by China to deal with regional issues. I understand that. But my question was, if that is the case, then why is China illegally capturing the territory of the tiny Himalayan nation of Bhutan, which has a population which is one-fourth of Delhi? Well, I think that, uh, um, that China's relationship with Bhutan, uh, is, of course, is, um, has got to contend with the um, realities on the border. Uh, Bhutan is, um, the, the, again, um, the territorial disputes um, uh, China is trying to resolve uh, a, a lot of these, except those, of course, uh, bordering with India. Um, and the relationship between Bhutan and, and China uh, has, has been close. Um, I don't think that uh, China has got any uh, kind of territorial ambitions at all. Um, and Ch uh, China is not, or, or already has got to a tremendous uh, task uh, of guarding its territorial borders, uh, bordering so many different countries. And so I think the relationship with China and Bhutan uh, must be seen in that light. Uh, China wants to maintain a peaceful uh, kind of environment, a peaceful relationship uh, with its uh, bordering countries. But of course, China will not sacrifice uh, its uh, territorial um, uh, claims or territorial integrity, as in the case of uh, neither would India. But I think that the uh, that this article um, in uh, in the Global Times suggests that China wants to promote. Uh, a, a better relationship uh, with its neighbors uh, and is coming to recognize um, uh, India's important role uh, right. in promoting a multipolar world, as I said before. All right, Mr. Luke. Uh, Tarakarta, would you like to respond? I, I mean, a multi, a multi, a multipolar world certainly helps India. It, it's, it's, it's core to our foreign policy. Perhaps China wants that as well. But do you see anything fundamentally different in Chinese foreign policy? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I mean, it's like one swallow doesn't make a summer, right? So one article in Global Times doesn't change a whole narrative. It is interesting that that article was there from a university, which has a dialogue with uh, our one of our think tanks, I think, for the last several years. So that is going on. The fact that the article came out is a good thing. But you just look at the recent uh, China-Maldives joint statement. I mean, you look at the content of that. It is It is a very aggressive statement talking of how you know they, they should have the uh, the maldives should be should have a you know independent they oppose external interference in internal affairs of maldives it follows china firmly supports the maldives in upholding its national sovereignty blah 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 all the rest and there's a strategic cooperative partnership between china and the maldives that's not going to make delhi very happy is it and it's hardly the sign of a state that wants to put you at your ease 
that is certainly not in that direction so yes i would what you said is right in the sense china wants india to emerge as a pole so that it is you know it is not and which which we have we don't go to any side in terms of a decision it's mean it's based on our interests that suits china to that extent it's a good thing will it change china's relationship to us as of now i don't see any signs of it at all but what they from looking at this whole thing from the beijing side what they will see is that india is moving very rapidly you know in so many areas like we in terms of defense manufacturing you know we got i think about we made a huge jump of 16000 crore in defense exports you've got the you know the, you're going to build a airport and a runway in the minikoi islands you've got you know your submarine building capabilities expected to grow up we are nowhere near what china is and they know that but we are getting there you know you've got 10 warships in the arabian sea patrolling that area so this is a very different india from what we were in the past that acknowledgement is there do they acknowledge us as a you know someone who could be a strategically inclined towards this no 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 they are at the, in that way they haven't changed at all they will still challenge you in every area ambassador trigunath the last word from you uh, what has fundamentally changed between let us say 2020 and now as far as india and our international presence is concerned which may have triggered that article or some in china saying that look you know we need to look at or relook at india and where we stand what's changed well well one thing i feel is that it is not the first time that we have seen this kind of an article we have seen several statements uh, in the past uh, routed through the global times when they have really appreciated india's strategic autonomy and that is also a strategic statement from their side so that india doesn't go into any alliance architecture with the united states with which sino us competition today is a very big reality so i believe i mean personally i think that going forward china china is going to be a challenge for india in every geography now we are not only talking about the bilateral dimension of the relationship you look at what is happening as dr kartha also mentioned in our neighborhood so or for that matter whether it's in west asia or elsewhere in africa so there is going to be a competition but wherever we can find some a possibility of cooperation with that that has been the policy of the government of india and possibly the chinese as well so we are continuing to have this competition and cooperative uh, metrics and trying to avoid the conflict All right, well, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. Um, the equation with China has complex and difficult to understand, as always.